you know the agglomeration of the communities that they stay together they have similar houses they have their own group of uh group spaces which are used for collective activities so they share a lot of common spaces and they have typical community layouts one of the classical examples in which i do speak about in my classes is a tree and a otla becomes the panchayat a small little garbhagriha becomes the temple and the well which is supposed to be used for fetching drinking water becomes your not only a community space but is so important for your wellness and health one solution that is being given is that water should be taken to everybody in the community yes you provide a piped water but what has it taken away it has taken away the entire culture of songs it has taken away the entire culture of sharing between the same age groups it has taken away the whole process where people actually could could support each other so just by providing a drinking water to the doorstep of every house you destroyed the entire culture which was existing flourishing and important as a community space within the entire community so when we think about interventions from outside while facilitating we should think hard about whether we are giving the right solution to the right community the other thing that needs to be understood is that vernacular also has this architecture archaeological and historic value you can see the progression in the details that is being achieved you can learn about their building knowledge systems and you can see a gradual increase in their spatial organizations so if you really sit down and work on then architectural archaeological and historic value can easily be interpreted from the vernacular as i said it is a perfect solution for the environment you are and in india right from north to south you can east to west you can go at every place there is a certain kind of a climate and the vernacular finds a solution for it maybe through the width of the wall maybe the type of thatch it is using maybe responding to the water rainfall that they are getting and aesthetics it is not always on the building a rangoli can add a lot of color in your life a wall printed even the cloth door ke upar jo toran lagate hain that they all have a strong sense of color and ornamentation and they it is symbolic symbolic most of the time to bring in lot of happiness to bring in lot of prosperity and that when you are surrounded with that kind of symbolism life seems to be happy and this is something that we should learn from the vernacular people mummy baat karna chalu karna to call aaj ko mummy aaj ke and they can still achieve am i supposed to stop no ma'am no ma'am you can continue i think someone has unmuted okay okay, okay. going on from here there is another thing which is very much inbuilt into vernacular is the economic value economy as i said is reflected in the permanency of the material the kind of houses it is built but it is also integral to your to your tradition every diwali the house has to be cleaned repaired made ready so maintenance is a cyclic process which is being inbuilt into our culture and that also saves lots and lots of money towards larger collapses the continuity of the house is ensured through its cyclic process of maintenance it has a special value because maximum times you would have multifunctional spaces and multifunctional furniture one of the best examples is the cart you would you would use it for eating food 
for sleeping to welcome your guest and when it is all done you can always put the cart on the nail and the floor is free have we been able to design such kind of a multifunctional furniture is beyond what we think and know and we are not learning from the right sources we are giving in into so much of dead specialized furniture which is once in a while used and consumes the entire floor so aesthetic analysis of vernacular does not seem to be only in the symbolism it is an overall expression of massing of closed open semi open spaces the kind of trees that you plant and the kind of environments into which you engulf and incorporate into your houses this i am sharing is an example of nalukattu houses which is from kerala they are very good into boat building and they know how to treat their wood in a certain kind and they do not use nails for achieving that kind of construction so the nails are also clips of wood and they achieve such complex wooden joinery which we get restricted to mackes king post and queen post life is far beyond it and we should learn from these vernacular roofing systems though the principle still remains the same that you go on subdividing the area till the time your tile or coconut leaf fits in another example is of this bhumit settlements in bengal so they are largely farmers and look at the wooden joinery they are using the natural tree in a v shape to place their post on top of it it is as simple as that we do not need huge kinds of nails tying systems it is just the wood and the jute and it can work miracles simplicity is another um strength of vernacular so with aesthetics you will get the simplicity all the joinery details are unconfusing clear demarcation can be done and there is lot of things that we can learn from the vernacular climatic conditions are best understood with them they would understand the wind flows they will understand the air circulation they would place their windows in such a way that everything comes in and goes but without disturbing your own housing coming to the point of traditional architecture yes there is a lot of saying that vernacular is traditional but you have to understand why it is traditional vernacular cannot or is not produced in a day it is the generational knowledge which goes on evolving and adapting itself to become a certain kind of expression which comes at a later stage but traditional architecture according to me is something which gets standardized you would have a certain ratio proportion you would end up having finalizing the joinery details and building on it so while at one place we say that vernacular is traditional it is traditional in its phases of evolution but it is not traditional because it adapts itself to the kind of space you have and there is no standardization of this has to be like this or this should not be like this the do's and don'ts about the geometry about the arithmetics all start with traditional architecture but vernacular houses would be an expression collect things from around you and start building it the joinery details to make it into a vernacular house so here is what i uh, discuss a lot with with faculties as to do you think this is this is the way that new designs come up? yes you initially we will try and imitate somebody we will get influenced by some person we will be inspired to build in a certain way 
but gradually evolve gradually we innovate and then comes the new design so in this age of copyrights is imitation possible can imitation be also said to be a learning is something that we need to think about because iconography you have to imitate every little detail has a meaning and that meaning cannot be disturbed in the way we are expressing so then how can we do it we have to maintain few things we have to innovate and we also have to intervene into the existing fabric that just doesn't happen un consciously we have to take conscious decisions into our intervention so let us look at the degrees in which we try and learn because a we get impressed kailash temple oh my god we get impressed by it but we can't even make a model out of it how do you think this will get imitated in the vernacular so therefore the monumental quality of the vernacular is usually into the residences and not into the huge monument but we do get impressed we travel we collect the detail and maybe when we return we try and imitate it into our vernacular imitation is also a good way of learning so we know bibi ka maqbara is an imitation to taj mahal but the scale the place and the money is not the same so what is being produced is the central idea not perfect mm level detail detailing been repeated and do you mind this imitation it is something to think in this age another area of our learning is how do we handle other things than just the build the water because we know the wet areas and dry areas have to be different and vernacular people have been doing it very very carefully these are the sli uh, sli uh, slides from dholavira dholavira has a perfect water management systems so these were developed right during the harappan times are we trying to do something about it we have innovated a pipeline and the treatment facilities it is inspired still from the traditional one it is not something which is absolutely different from what we were doing for generations together so evolving is always a part of our life so you can see it in the way pipelines have been taken before we had aqueducts now we have the pipelines water is transported from one place to another water is diverted in a certain condition these are the inspirations that we take forward another classic example is from alai darwaza humayun's tomb is made so something which was which inspired you resulted into some other product and the same process happens in vernacular too so a small little doorway somebody innovates and then there are a lot of replicas maybe something similar maybe something different and it goes on intervention yes we thought we invented the rain water pipes the ones that are now visible but ancient temples show water pipes being made into stone a vernacular uh solution is to the spout in kerala they have lot of chains being chains being associate drop out from the spout so water doesn't splashes all all over it runs in a certain direction innovation do you think this modern residence plan just came from the sky or was being thought no the vernacular is continuously developing and that development have resulted into these residences the residence plans but what is lost is a huge amount of multi functionality because then we started making it specific as if a bedroom cannot become a drawing room or a guest room these are few things that we have to think about terracotta was always seen to be a a, a solution to water drinking 
but now it has also proved that you can make passive walls out of it which can actually drop the temperature by 5 degrees so while we are going on into modernity with all these industrialized materials and and solutions vernacular is something which has given solutions from what is there around you are we encouraging this thought process is something to be thought of because it seems that now wood is becoming more scarce greenery is also becoming something that we cannot afford to break down in that case when the material seems to be have lost can we still continue with the spatial planning and the architectural uh, expressions into the future is something that we need to think about small little things of sustainability of nutrition of well being is all achieved in the vernacular you will find that somewhere there is a karela ka bale tulsi is there doesn't allow mosquitoes to come in this kind of a traditional knowledge which is all part and parcel of the vernacular is actually being lost into the flat kings because while transiting from one place to another some things have continued but the nutrition value is all lost so not for everybody because there are people who are doing kitchen gardening also so sustainability which was all a part of our living whether it is flower whether it is smell whether it is nutrition is something that we have to continue in the modernity and you can't run away from them respect for each other has all hello ma'am 